What's good, Year 11 VCAL Numeracy class, Mr. Herman here, and this video is going to be dedicated to looking at Log 6, Exercise 36.6, .6, the mean. What do you mean the mean? The mean is a form of an average. What do you mean an average? Um, we'll look into that. I'll stop doing that now. Uh, questions 1 to 5 is what we'll be doing from 36.6. .6. And what we mean by the mean is measuring the middle of the data. So, data, by now you should hopefully know that data is just collected information. Collected information. We collect this information through surveys, um, through questionnaires, through observations, etc. Now, with this data, um, let's take a, a, a sporting type of context. We're all familiar with sporting averages that are used to measure the performances of those playing a sport. The mean or average is the most commonly used measure of the middle. The two other measures, the mode and the median, are also useful on occasions. And when it says on occasions, it just means dependent on what type of data you have. Now, let's backtrack a little bit. We say we get data, okay? And we get a whole set, uh, specifically numerical data. We get a whole set of numbers. Sometimes it's, it's, it's hard to just look at this whole list of numbers. Um, we wanna summarize this. We wanna, in, we wanna do a summary of these the whole list of numbers so we can say, look, this number right here is the best representation number for all of these numbers that we see from this list. And there are three different ways that we can do this, okay? And so the content is average. The word for this, to get a summary of all this data, is average. And there are three different averages. There is the mean, there is the median, and there is the mode. Put simply, the mean is this adding up all the data sets and dividing it by how many data sets we have, which we'll, I'll get to that um, equation here in a second. The median is just the middle value, the middle value, and the mode is the most common value, the number that appears uh, the most within a data set. These three different types of averages are used interchangeably depending on what type of data set you have. We're just going to be looking at what the mean is, how it works, the equation for it, and some a uh, few examples. So the mean is just a set of numbers is found by dividing the sum of the numbers by how many numbers there are within the set. We often use the term average but the term mean is more precise because there are three different types of averages that you can use so when someone says oh what's the average of the score most likely they're going to be talking about uh, the mean they're going to get the uh, the mean method but that doesn't necessarily mean no pun intended that they can use the median or the mode they can use those if they want but this is just the most common the symbol x with the line on top of it is read as x bar this this is just a bar, this little line on the top. And this little symbol is represented to talk about the mean, okay? Um, it's a new symbol, you probably have not seen it before. You've seen obviously the letter X and you've seen it pop up in maths. We, as soon as we put a little line or a bar on top of it, we are talking about the mean, okay? And so to get the mean, this X bar, this is equal to the sum of all the numbers divided by how many numbers in the set? This should say how many numbers in the set. So this example here, we'll jump straight into it. We've got Jose and Anthea both play goal shooter for their respective netball teams. Given their performances for the season were as follows, who has the highest meme? Now, before we get to that, we can see that Jose played 11 games and Anthea played eight games. So it's safe to say that maybe this is a little bit biased because Jose has played more games, but let's just take it for face value. We have all these numbers here. 
who performs better. Now there are different ways of getting this information, um, but your best way is to get the the mean. Now this isn't going to mean that when we find out that specific person is the best player in netball. All we're doing is just finding another number that best indicates that they are better at netball just based on that data. Okay, It's just an indication, it's not solely a whole answer for who's better. So to get Jose's mean, add up all the, the numbers uh, for what Jose scored and then divide this by 11 because Jose uh, played 11 games. When you add the top, it ends up being 260. And this is all over 11. And on your calculator, you will just work out 260 divided by 11. And this will give you this answer here. Now, this little squiggly line, this is a, not an equal sign, but it's actually an approximation sign because the answer that we have is an approximate because it's given in decimal format, okay? Technically, this goes on 23.64 and it keeps going and going. We have to um, cut this number and traditionally we cut it to two decimal places. So this is why we use this, um, this equate, not equation, sorry, this uh, squiggly equal sign, which just means approximately. Okay, I just wanna write approx for short. So Jose got 23.64 and Thea, same method, add up her scores, but this time we're just gonna divide it by eight games. We get 195 divided by eight. Uh, 195 over 8, so just 195 divided by 8 in your calculator, 24.38. Meaning that despite Anthea playing less games, she has got a better average or better mean in this case, which is 24.38. So you will just answer that Anthea scored the higher mean number of goals. This is asking for the higher mean. Does that mean Anthea is better than Jose? Who knows, all, all we're doing from statistics is just taking this information that we have and making the best predictions or judgments from this information. So maybe she is, maybe she isn't. This is just empirically shown based on the means of what they've scored, okay? And the second and last example, we're gonna be looking at finding the mean from tabulated Data. Tabulated just it's a fancy blaze. Fancy. Just means table. Uh, it just means table data. So this uh, table shows the number of aces served by tennis players in their first set of a tournament. Determine the mean number of aces. Now we have to just be careful of how we interpret this information. Okay. So the number of aces um, from a certain player, uh, they just scored one, okay? So if they scored one ace within their tournament, they have just one ace. And this number here, the frequency tells me how many people scored only one ace within their tournament, and this is four. So four people scored that, okay? For two aces within the tournament, 11 people scored that. So 11 people score that. For eight, uh, for three aces, um, 18 people scored. So if we wanna know how many people there were within this uh, tournament, if we know four people scored this, 11 people scored that, 18 people, if this frequency indicates how many people there are, can't we just add these all up to get our total amount? Well, we might as well. And the next part, what we're gonna do is we're gonna represent this information in a different uh, table. We're gonna have the number of aces, as the list here, the vertical list, first list. We're gonna have a frequency amount, is a second list, which is a copy of that. And what we're going to do is we're gonna count up how many aces there were scored all up. So in other words, um, there were one, two, so one, two, three, four aces, plus another 11 twos. So two plus two plus two 11 times. Now, this is going to be uh, quite time consuming, okay? So instead, we're gonna just do uh, F times X, or a frequency amount, 
times the number of aces. So we've got four aces, okay? So this, these four people contributed four aces. Then these 11 people contributed 22 aces because each one of them had scored two aces within the tournament. These 18 people contributed three aces each, so all up, they contributed 54 aces. When we find out the, um, the amount of aces for each group, 52, 35, and 12, we add this all up for our total amount here, meaning that there were 179 aces all up, 179 aces all up within this tournament that were distributed by 55 people, or 55 tennis players. So to find out what the average is, we'll just take the amount of aces there are, and we'll just divide it by the number of people that contributed, in this case of 55. And this approximation, when you put into the calculator 179 divided by 55, will give you approximately 3.25. What does that 3.25 mean? That just means from this tournament, this tennis tournament, from the 55 players, on average, by using the mean on average, they're likely to do 3.25 or three and a quarter aces within a tournament, okay? Because this was the average amount from that tournament. Some people kind of a little bit lower than 3.25, some people were a bit higher than 3.25, but on average, the t uh, based on the information that we've got here, 3.25 is the mean um, for aces within this tournament. Okay, it gives you like a middle ground or a summary or a snapshot of all the tennis players' performances in regards to aces. And that concludes this video for exercise 36.6, the mean. Questions one to five is what you need to do. If you need any help, just message me on the chat system on Microsoft 365. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.